So going back to the, the viewer's ad experience and, and the role it plays, you know, I think you got to go back and, and say, you know, take a trip down memory lane, right? Arguably, Netflix and Hulu really ushered in the world of streaming uh, and, and CTV, uh, and it was not ad supported, right? It was even as low as five ninety nine a month, which was a huge win for consumers. But we've enjoyed that luxury, and and we've seen the prices go up year over year, and and digging into that sort of revenue data, we started to see it wasn't necessarily because they were greedy, but rather it was a, it was a loss leader priced fair below fair market value to pull in market share. You know, today adding up two to three premium services, you know, um, that are also now ad supported, uh, we'd be at par if not paying more than, you know, we used to pay with the triple plate passes, if you remember that. Um, and, and I do believe that the advertising experience is as relevant, if not more important uh, in this day and age, because we're, we're paving the way to the future of TV advertising. Uh, the viewer experience for CTV largely falls within, you know, two buckets. The first sort of mirroring sort of the historical linear live stream experience where, you know, when you turn on the television, you're, you're seeing whichever episode um, the network shows up. Um, and, you know, you, you get sort of what you're, you're served. The second sort of falls within the bucket of video on demand, where the program and the whole season is available and, and you can watch whatever is available, um, you know, the, to your heart's desire. And that's where some of the new experiences around binge, uh, binge watching it is sort of coming to bear. Um, but however, irrespective of sort of the experiences there, both help subsidize, you know, the cost of service as well as give time brands, uh, give time for brands uh, to speak to the consumer. Um, the actual perceived, you know, the trade-off between, um, you know, the high quality viewer experience as well as, uh, you know, the publisher, you know, I think it's, it's important to note that um, it's not a zero sum game. In fact, uh, we believe that we can deliver highly engaging advertising experiences while maintaining a, a high quality of viewer experience, right? We've you know, recently in the upfronts launched a number of advanced ad formats to do just that, you know, high impact ads to shoppable uh, QR code ads, right, to aid in the experience in which the, the brand and the advertiser can um, help with um, product discovery, as well as help with the content flow better to the ad experience. We've also launched um, pause ads as well as binge ads um, to our, uh, our suite of products as well. Now, in these new ad-supported environments, there's a lot, been a lot more discussion about inventory transparency. So I wanted to hear what, what you could uh, tell us more about things like program-level met metadata, like the genre, the programming, and pod position. Why are those so important in connected TV media buying and selling? Absolutely. Um, if we think about it, it actually is, is pretty straightforward. From the buyer's perspective, uh, they really want to know what they're getting. In the programmatic ecosystem, if the metadata isn't shared with the buyer uh, and the buyer doesn't know, or rather if the buyer only knows that it's an opportunity with one of Televisa Univision's apps uh, with no context of what genre or what program or what pod positioning there is, um, then the, the buyer isn't none the wiser on, on the value in which um, the content is, is is driving for for the buyer. So when we start to juxtapose that with um, you know what was offered in, in our linear services, it's actually fairly standard. And I see this as sort of the a part of the convergence between uh, traditional linear television and CTV um, and the programmatic world. I think it's a little bit about ensuring that we're transparent, we're sharing uh, and fulfilling the full value of what our content um, you know can offer. Now, Univision, you're making a big push into uh, streaming. And so as video and TV converge, how are media buying and selling uh, changing with these new services? Are, and what are some of the big opportunities you're seeing at Univision? Yeah, I think that's, I think that's the, um, the biggest question out there, right? I think as we sort of see both worlds um, you know, converging, I think we have to think about it from both sides. Um, for linear... You know, I think there's learning where there's almost a fundamental shift in strategy and learning that can be done as, you know, those media endpoints go further into being delivered digitally. 
Um, the digital use ecosystem is, is really, is truly considered big data um, because you have richer data sets that come back at a faster pace in, in near real time, which can enable a number of different strategies and behaviors uh, in television, uh, for television buyers and sellers that, that they have not been privy to, you know, real time, you know, uh, RTV or real time bidding uh, for one, uh, header bidding or, or dynamic pricing, you know, et cetera. Um, for the digital buyers, it's, it's more about understanding the value of the big screen, I think. Um, you know, that it's not just another endpoint or impression with 100% viewability above the fold and part of pre-bid, right? Um, you know, I had this conversation once with uh, a CTO who had just learned about, uh, or rather who got into his digital advertising, uh, or got into advertising through digital. And um, he first compared to learning digital as the study of astronomy, whereas he was learning, and, and whereas learning linear was the study of uh, astrology almost. And, and that was eye-opening for me because, you know, what it told me was that, you know, linear, for, for a digital buyer going to linear, it's not as straightforward. I think there's a lot that is tied to the Nielsen legacy and how business was done before. And um, really, it's about understanding the value of media math and, and measurement um, and that there's a lot of return path data that can come from, um, you know, the ACR and the set-top boxes. Um, but ultimately, it has to do with the technology that, um, you know, CTV has not been able to solve for, which is around, um, you know, personification. And, and that's something that I think um, really understanding that aspect of it, um, you know, will help the convergence between CTV and, and linear. And another thing we're seeing is more automation with the growth of automated auctions that have been around in digital, but now are coming to uh, different parts of the, the television marketplace. So in that environment, how is Univision approaching your direct sold versus programmatic efforts? Yeah, today, you know, direct sold and programmatic sales are, are coming slowly together. I think internally, um, there are a lot of systems that are actually are, are done separately. And we do uh, believe that those two should operate in concert together. Um, that is why we're investing heavily in uh, partners who are working in unified auctioning um, and ad decisioning uh, that are interoperable across a number of our ad servers. I think you know, it's important also to note that for Televisa Univision, um, it's not just video that, that we're um, involved in, right? Um, it, while it's a huge part of our offering in the market, um, we also have podcasts and audio, social, uh, as well as linear and live events. And we're also local, regional, as well as national. And so when you think about um, from a system standpoint, each of those might have its own disparate system. And, and those really need to work in concert and, and decision together. Um, so, you know, while there is a aspect of um, ad decisioning between um, direct and um, programmatic, we want to ensure all of those things, including the regional, the national, and the local, um, the audio, the linear, and the live events start working together. That's the future that we're, we're marching towards. And finally, Brian, I was hoping uh, just to get your perspective on what you expect to happen next in the next few months or a year or so, if there's anything that we need to keep an eye on. Yeah, I know that, you know, this is something that, you know, has been spoken about a, a number of times. You know, I do believe that many of the features that we've seen in programmatic buying will come back and be front and center in a very big way for video buyers. Um, as CTV continues to grow and the pipes that we're sitting on are, are going to be IP deliver based, um, it's going to be, it's going to change a lot for the systems between buyers and sellers. Um, you know, while we're still, I think, quite a far, a bit way, um, I do, I am really excited about that sort of coming there. 